My name is Mary Jo Gray. I'm an African-American woman with rich caramel skin, black short hair, and my hair, I'm also short, black short hair, and my hair is tightly curled and a kind of faded cut. I'm wearing a gray turtleneck, and a royal blue blazer, hoop earrings, a crystal pendant, red lipstick and red reading glasses, and a smile. I'm the compliance officer for the School of Dentistry and the current Women of Color Task Force Executive President. We're here to celebrate and engage in the 40th Annual Women of Color Career Conference. I welcome and thank each of you for being with us today. And now that if we were in person, we would all be wildly applauding this momentous occasion. We'd like to start the day with acknowledgement and thanks. Whether you're on campus in Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti, elsewhere in Michigan or in the United States, we want to recognize that we are all living and learning on stolen indigenous territories, many of which were toiled over by black enslaved peoples. Specifically, the Anishinaabe peoples formed and stewarded the land and traditional territories where the University of Michigan is located. This includes the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa, along with their neighbors, the Seneca, Delaware, Shawnee, and Wyandotte nations. We acknowledge and thank those native peoples who still struggle for self-determination. The fight against settler colonialism and anti-Blackness will always be inextricably linked to the land, to the collective, and to the ancestors. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We will now have greetings from two of our university sponsors. First, we will hear from Dr. Tiffany Mara, director of CEW+. Dr. Mara will be followed by Mr. Rich Holcomb, the Associate Vice President for Human Resources. Good morning. My name is Dr. Tiffany Marr and I'm the Director of the Center for the Education of Women. It's my honor to welcome you to the 40th anniversary of the WCTF Career Conference at the University of Michigan. Today's theme, The Time Is Now, could not be more relevant. As we complete the second full year of living through a global pandemic, it's become apparent that the cost of the pandemic has been higher for women, especially women of color. As schools shut down and caregiving responsibilities of loved ones increased, women left the workforce in much higher numbers to provide the unpaid labor to ensure the health and well being of their families. The time is now to equip women with the tools they need to reach their potential. The time is now to ensure that workplaces are informed by the perspectives of women, especially women of color. The time is now. At CEW, we empower women and underserved individuals in the University of Michigan and surrounding communities by serving as advocates and providing resources to help them reach their academic, financial, and professional potential. I hope that beyond today, you will learn about CEW services and consider how they might assist you on your journey. Putting on a conference of this magnitude requires a lot of teamwork, coordination, and dedication. First, I would like to acknowledge the Women of Color Task Force executive team who have spent countless hours identifying amazing, inspiring presenters for all of us to learn from. In particular, I would like to thank Mary Jo Gray, president of the WCTF executive team, and Janice Rubin, WCTF coordinator, for their extraordinary dedication and commitment over the past several weeks as conference coordination needs have increased. Behind the scenes, the entire CEW team has been providing instrumental support to ensure that all attendees have an engaging, meaningful, and seamless experience at today's conference. I'm continually amazed by what our small team is able to accomplish. Thank you for your hard work allowing us to be in community today. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the generosity of all of the conference sponsors who have made today possible. I'd like to extend a special thank you to our partners at TIAA. TIAA has been a major sponsor of this conference since 2003. I'd like to give a special thanks to our TIA partners, Julie, Michelle, Teresa, and Paul for their shared values, trust, and faith as partners creating change together. 
Speaker funds for today were provided by the CEW Francis and Cindy Lewis Fund, which provides financial support to engage visiting leaders with the U of M campus and community. It's my honor to now welcome Rich Holcomb, Associate Vice President for Human Resources at the University of Michigan. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, welcome everybody and happy Friday. Um, I'd like to take a moment to, com to commend CW Plus and the Women of Color Task Force on your 40th career conference. Just simply incredible. So give yourselves all a quick round of applause, 40 years. Uh, this is a monumental achievement and demonstrates the effectiveness and the importance of these groups. It would not be possible without the dedication of caring, committed leaders and volunteers, not to mention the thousands of participants uh, who've attended over the years. You have touched the lives of many and made a difference in that process. I wanna give a big sincere thanks to all those that have been involved over the years. I know it takes a tremendous amount of work and planning and I just wanna uh, applaud the planning committee for today's event. Again, a lot of work going into this. So thank you very much. U of M's uh, staff development philosophy states that people are its most important resource for sustaining excellence in teaching, research, and service. As a result, it is our commitment and our obligation to provide resources and support to the professional and career development of our faculty and staff. During the past two years, we've all saw how critical it is to support employees, not only with the skill development training, but exercising grace and flexibility and supporting work-life balance. Uh, we know that the challenges over the last couple of years have come in so many different forms. And again, we applaud the resiliency of our workforce. There are things that we can do to support a healthy, productive, and highly engaged workforce. You work at U of M because you believe in what you do. It's our mission, mission-driven work, whether you're supporting education, research, patient care, you're contributing to society uh, in, a, in a positive way. And for that, we support and, and really uh, applaud your dedication that each of you are making to supporting university being a great place to work. You know, I think it's important to think about our culture and our environment. While the university is a great place to work, we still have work to do. Uh, we've gone through a really difficult period of time as an institution uh, at the leadership. We have transition at the leadership levels. We've had several harmful incidents that have impacted us all in different ways. Together, we can build a culture together that reflects our highest ideals. The university has charged a working group with identifying and recommending a set of unifying values that will serve as the foundation for our future culture change efforts. The working group is co-chaired by Sonia Jacobs, Chief Organizational Learning Officer, and Patricia Hearn, the Dean of School of Nursing. And you'll soon be hearing from Sonia here in a few moments. This effort requires um, as much participation as possible. If you haven't already uh, done so, please take a short poll that's available on the website, that's culturejourney.umich.edu to help really provide Sonia and team with valuable input and feedback around our culture journey. There will also be a community assembly later this spring, open to all faculty and staff to participate. I hope that you take the time to shape our future so that we can continue to be a great place to work and have an impact on our mission and contributing to society and doing the meaningful work that we do each and every day. Let me just reiterate uh, that I, really thank all of you for joining us today, dedicating your time, committing your energy and your resources. I hope that you're able to make connections with individuals today through the discussions that perhaps you haven't seen in a while. And again, I hope you have a great day. Thanks everybody, go blue. Thank you, Dr. Mara. And Dr. Holcomb. Now we will have remarks from Sonia Jacobs, Chief, sorry, the Chief Organizational Learning Officer and Senior Director. Um, Ms. Jacobs will, will be followed by Ms. D. Hunt, Chief Human Resources Officer for Michigan Medicine. Ms. Jacobs. 
Good morning and thank you, Mary Jo. Good Friday morning to everyone. And on behalf of organizational learning, I'm really excited and grateful to bring greetings and congratulate the Women of Color Task Force on 40 years of providing professional development to our community. I wanna give a special thanks to the 160 dynamic women who serve on the task force, bringing their energy and creativity to the community through this event. We've spent the last two years, as we've heard, grappling with systemic injustices, the devastating impact of the pandemic and assault on our democracy that has forever altered our lives and world as we know it. But through it all, you have persevered and have emerged even more resolute to continue to grow personally and professionally as indicated by your presence today. The time is now to focus on you your career development. So I encourage you to take advantage of the holistic approach to skill development being offered today to help with your physical, emotional, and financial well-being, and to equip you with skills to advance your career, build inclusive relationships, and contribute to organizational change. And in honor of the upcoming Charles and Christella Moody lecture next month, I close with the quote, that guided their lives. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Learn from your workshop speakers and your peers that you can network with and remember to share your learning with those unable to attend today. Take it all in, enjoy the day and have a great weekend. Great advice from all of our, our greeters here. So good morning, everyone. What a wonderful opportunity for us to be part of the 40th anniversary of the Women of Color Task Force Career Conference. It's a pleasure to also welcome you to this year's special conference. And 40 years later, what an appropriate title. The time is now. After two years in a pandemic, living through social unrest, ongoing diversity and equity concerns, and senseless killings, we have experienced it all and our lives have changed. But in the words of Maya Angelou, yet we rise. As women, we can be natural caregivers, but now is the time to invest in ourselves, invest in our development, our careers, and in networking. It's time to try something different, learn, in our, learn something new, share knowledge with someone else and prepare for our future. The time is now. We must do this for ourselves because so many took the time to make this conference and workshops available for us. A special thanks to our sponsors, CW Plus and all the members of the Women of Color Task Force Executive Committee. Thank you. The Office of the Provost, University of Michigan and Michigan Medicine HR departments. And we can't forget our partners and Platinum Plus corporate sponsors, TIAA. Thank you all. Meet someone new today. You can still do that at a virtual conference and stay in touch with them. Encourage each other. Take advantage of the wisdom in the room all around. Now is the time, and now is the time for us to enjoy a great conference. Thank you all and have an enjoyable day. Thank you, Sonia and Dee. We will now hear from Dr. Katrina Golden Wade. Dr. Golden Wade is the Deputy Chief Diversity Officer within the office of diversity, equity, and inclusion. She will be followed by Janice Rubin, who should need no introduction. However, Janice is the Women of Color Task Force Coordinator and CEW Plus Advocacy Program Manager, Dr. Golden Wade. Thank you and good day to all of you. My name is Katrina Wade Golden, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of serving as U of M's Deputy Chief Diversity Officer. In the Office of the Provost and the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, we view the annual Women of Color Task Force Career Conference as a signature event on our campus that supports our efforts 
to advance the goals of our strategic diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. We are truly stronger together and efforts that build up important facets of our community make us all better. Thank you to the Center for the Education of Women Plus and to the, w, the Women of Color Task Force for their diligent work with this conference. It is truly impressive and it's been a wonderful resource for our campus for 40 years. I know that one of the most important aims of this initiative is to bring people together all across the university and beyond to share ideas and perspectives and to develop and communicate best practices and to cultivate spaces and opportunities to apply our shared learnings as we commit to build a more diverse, equitable and inclusive community. I'd like to thank both the conference attendees and sponsors for coming today. I understand that regist registrants are from U of M departments as well as community members and employees from other institutions all across the country. I wanna acknowledge the contributions of the workshop presenters for don donating their time and efforts to support career development at this really important event. I'd also like to recognize the Women of Color Task Force executive team for their project leadership and the WCTF members for their amazing efforts and dedication to support this impactful DEI project. Additionally, I'd like to send special recognition to WCTF coordinator Janice Rubin for almost 19 years of university service and coordinating activities for the Women of Color Task Force project. We should all heed what Martin Luther King Jr. called the fierce urgency of now to be active and become the catalyst for change that you wanna see in the world and in your immediate sphere, in yourself and or in your workplace and your community. Building a more equitable, or building a more diverse, equitable and inclusive U of M community truly takes the will and work of all of us. We invite you to join us in our transition from DEI 1.0 to DEI 2.0, applying what you learned from this very important conference today. I encourage you to become active in your unit's DEI initiatives and plan activities. We're gonna be sending out in the very near future a campus communication regarding the transition on our campus from DEI 1.0 to 2.0 but you can always learn more at our website, diversity.umich.edu. So on behalf of the Office of the Provost and the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, I wish you much success today as you embark upon your activities. Be sure to learn much. Make sure you fellowship even in this virtual space with your colleagues, making sure to have some fun and commit together today in this space to build, to grow, and to evolve over time. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Janice Rubin, the CEW Advocacy Program Manager. I've had the distinct honor and pleasure to serve as the coordinator of the Women of Color Task Force for almost 19 years. I'm an African-American woman with cafe au lait skin, dark brown, naturally wavy hair, and I am wearing today a muted version of maize and blue, a tannish yellow turtleneck, a navy vest covered by a plaid maize blue and white woven scarf with my navy glasses. First, let me thank you again, say thank you again to our, our University of Michigan sponsors for supporting us and bringing greetings to, the, to us this morning. Your support has been crucial for the continuation and success of this, this project over the years. Later this afternoon, we will hear from TIAA, the Corporate Platinum Plus sponsor for this event during our keynote session. To you, our audience, please know that we appreciate your presence here today. We can't run a conference without our participants. 
I've been asked to cover a few housekeeping items since we have so many first time attendees registered this year, almost 40%. Here's some quick and easy tips to navigate to go along to navigate this virtual conference to go along with the ones that have been shared with you by our sponsors. First, please remember, do not share your workshop links in order to keep the meeting secure but make sure your links are accessible so that you can easily enter your sessions. Remember to always be respectful of presenters and other conference attendees during the day. Next, please make sure your microphone is muted when you enter any virtual session. Also stay hydrated and keep your snacks nearby. Take a bio break, move, stretch, dance, do what you need to do to keep the blood flowing in your veins. We want you focused, refreshed, and ready to receive the knowledge that will be imparted to you today. Be ready to take notes to share with others after this event is over. We have dynamic presenters this year. So make sure you log into your sessions at least three to five minutes early because you don't want to miss a moment of what they have to say. Also in your sessions, please follow the presenter's instructions for responding to polls and questions. And if a presenter does not get to your question, please be patient. We will save comments and questions and then follow up with you after the conference. Now that's the end of housekeeping. So let's celebrate. Not only are we celebrating 40 years of this conference, but I want to take a few minutes to acknowledge a few special colleagues who have retired from the university this past year. Between the three of them, they have more than 80 years of service to our great institution. But just as importantly, these three women are kind, impactful servant leaders who made it their business to support the infrastructure and elevate the work of each unit in which they serve. Ms. Crystal Robinson, a former admin assistant who advanced through the ranks to become a senior human resource administrator at Michigan Medicine. Crystal served as a mentor to early career professionals in the Women of Color Task Force. Mrs. Janice Williamson, who spent several years at MCARE before coming to the Ann Arbor campus to help students find support to cover their health care expenses. Janice worked for 18 years in the managed care office at, the, at University Health Service before retiring at the end of October. And finally, Mrs. Wendy Woods, former Ann Arbor City Council person who continued her transformative community leadership as the Associate Director of the Michigan Community Scholars Program for many, many years before retiring in December. Congratulations to all three of you. We salute you and thank you for your amazing years of service to the University of Michigan. Now we will have uh, a demonstration of a quick bio break. And while we are doing the bio break, we want you all to stand up, stretch, grab some water, grab some coffee or tea, and we will show you our slideshow again. And then we will have a presentation and final remarks when we return. We just had a quick break, but we have a surprise. We have a special guest in our midst. Representative Felicia Brabeck has a special presentation to make to the conference today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this space with you. I am thrilled to be here with all of you uh, on this momentous occasion. Uh, as Janice said, I'm Felicia Brabeck. Uh, I get to represent the 55th district here in the state of Michigan, uh, which is part of the city of Ann Arbor. 
uh, Ann Arbor Township, York, Pittsfield, Augusta Townships, and part of the city of Milan. Uh, and so get to work with our amazing university on quite a bit of things, uh, which is always very exciting. And today, like I said, I have the distinct pleasure of uh, presenting the Women of Color Task Force with this tribute uh, in commemoration of this momentous occasion. And I wanna read this and share this with all of you. So this is a special tribute to the Women of Color Task Force. Let it be known that this is, that is with deep appreciation for all of the hard work, commitment, and planning this occasion represents that we commemorate the 40th Annual Career Conference of the Women of Color Task Force at the University of Michigan. As members of the community and the people behind this enterprise gather to celebrate this event and express their confidence, we are proud to add our voice to commend everyone who has worked to make this day possible. We congratulate the organization on this tremendous accomplishment as they continue the necessary work that they have been doing for the last four decades. The Women of Color Task Force works to create an inclusive space that supports the university's efforts to maintain a diverse and highly skilled workforce. This group of staff volunteers have committed their time to promotion, development, and empowerment of women at the University of Michigan and beyond. Women are often underpaid, underappreciated, and underprotected in the workplace and continue to face challenges in our state and nation. In the face of growing uncertainty, it is important to create opportunities and programming to uplift women so our societies continue to flourish. The workshops this conference provides every year address issues of financial health and mental health, career advancement and professional development, and programs on leadership and activism. In special tribute, therefore, this document is signed and dedicated to commemorate the hard work and dedication of the Women of Color Task Force at the University of Michigan. May the future bring great success and satisfaction. And this tribute is signed by Governor Whitmer, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, and the entire Washtenaw delegation. That's Senator Jeff Irwin, Leader Donna Lasinski, Representative Yusuf Rabi, Representative Ronnie Peterson, and myself. And we are so grateful to be a little bit, um, a little part of your morning uh, and your day today. Thank you for allowing us to share this with you and to honor all of the work all the tremendous work that all of you are doing on a daily basis to be able to uplift women and particularly women of color. So thank you all. Uh, and thanks for letting me share um, some time with you this morning. Oh, <laughs> you all thought I was smiling before. I'm smiling even more now. Thank you so much for the time that you're spending with us this morning, for the effort um, that's gone into this tribute and for the recognition, because you're right, it, 40 years, that's a big deal. Um, and I obviously it's wasn't huge. around. It's huge. And I obviously <laughs> wasn't around for all that 40 years. Yet, never <laughs> happened. But, but knowing what it took to put today on and thinking that Women of Color Task Force has done this for 40 years without fail, mm. I, have um, supreme hope that we will do it for another 40. So thank you. Would you like and to we say- we appreciate that. We, I, I, we, the work that you all do is so paramount in terms of, again, supporting and uplifting and holding space for women to, to do all the good work that we do in the community every day. Uh, and that support and space is so necessary to keep us all in healthy, grounded places, right? The psychologist to me wants you know, like, us all to be in that kind of frame of mind. But the work that we do is hard, right? And that support is so paramount to our overall health. And so it, it is with so much gratitude that I am I am here with all of you and uh, you know being able to work on uh, and create this tribute for you is just a small token of that appreciation. Yes, thank you. We really are blessed um, to have your support. Um, are there other things while we have you here? I hope you have a few minutes. Are there other things that you would like to tell? I, I see we have 600 or more people on the, on the call today now. Yeah, that we have incredible. 1300 registered, so they'll be coming in and out during the right. day. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, again, I think that's just a testament to the work that you all have created over four decades, um, you know, that people know this is a space where they can go uh, and, and get what they need, whatever that is. Uh, and so thank you. Yeah, we, our delegation is working hard uh, in the state house um, in, a, in a variety of ways. We did a, a package of bills around women in the workforce. Uh, and so, you know, know that there are you know, many of us who are working to uplift folks that came out of the Progressive Women's Caucus. Uh, and so we continue to work on, on these issues uh, for, uh, you know, for ourselves, for other women, um, and know that there's a lot of work that we still need to do. Um, the psychologist in me, you know, I bring a lot of um, the mental health frame uh, and work to the legislative work that I get to do. Uh, there are 110 of us who are state representatives uh, and I am the only mental health care provider. Uh, and I wish there were more of me. I keep saying uh, that um, we need more mental health care providers. So mental health care providers, if you're out there and, and here sharing space with us, um, you know, we need more of us. Uh, we need more women. We need more women of color in that space. We bring a unique perspective to the work. I have watched policy change because of my presence um, and voice, and we need to use that. We need to use that for our community. We need to use that um, to be able to impact change for our, our communities and um, not only in this area, but in the state. We need to use our voices for that. Uh, and so, you know, think about, I always encourage folks, think about running and adding your voice. Women often have to be asked, I did, um, uh, to run for office. So uh, to all of you who are on here, this is your ask. This is that moment. I'm asking you all <laughs> uh, to consider that. Um, the work is too important, particularly at this time. Again, particularly around issues uh, with people of color. Um, we need more voices in those rooms, at those tables where decisions uh, are being made and um, we need to take that seriously. Uh, and so if I can have a rallying call, that would be it. Um, and again, like I said, I am just so grateful to be in this space for with all of you today. So the time is now to run for office. So it you is. had to be asked to run for office. Mm -hmm. Why did you think that you, um, why wasn't that in your mind that you were gonna do it yourself? Why did somebody yeah. have to ask you? That, that's a great question. So I was always the kid who was, you know, I was president of student council. I was captain of my sports teams, you know, um, even in my doctoral program, um, I was on the executive board. So I always loved doing that. You know, my friends in college made fun of me, my roommates, who I'm still very close with today, uh, made fun of me because they're like, we don't know anybody else who likes to get up at 730 in the morning to meet with the deans, tell them what we want, you know. Uh, so I always loved being able to be that conduit to bring what, what people want to the places where we could make that happen. Um, but I was a therapist. You know, I, was, I went to school to be a therapist. I love being a therapist. Um, you know, I love walking with folks in their journeys. Um, and, and so it just wasn't something that I had considered. But interestingly, I loved my policy classes that I took, you know, both in my master's program and in my doc program. I loved them. Um, and, you know, someone, when they asked me, I was like, well, let me find out what this would mean. You know, what would it mean for me? What would it mean for the skill set that I bring? Uh, what would it mean for our family? You know, all the things that, that we all balance all the time. Uh, and I did it and loved it. You know, I got, you know, so got hooked and uh, loved the work that we get to do. Uh, and so there isn't, <clears throat> you know, Rep Robbie and I were just talking to some high school students last week, last Friday. Um, and we were saying there isn't one thing, you know, like one path that makes you qualified to run for office. You know, it's not like you have to go to law school and, and that's what makes you qualified. Uh, absolutely not. Um, you know, so many of uh, so many women are, you know, the organizers and leaders of PTOs uh, or church groups, uh, you know, any number of things um, that we as women are leaders in and we don't make that um, that transition to understand that that translates into policy work. Um, and so we need to make that, uh, that leap and that it's not, well, not a leap, but we need to, to make that connection, um, to know that we are constantly developed and, and, uh, you know, having uh, the ability to do things like you're doing today, 
um, to hone and build those skills, those are the things that, that make us good policymakers. Uh, and so know that that is, um, you all have the, uh, the ability and um, the, the training because you're here uh, to be able to, to do that work. And it's important to, to not count yourself out. It is so important to hear that you're bringing yourself yeah. to the office and that you don't need any official training. You don't need to be a lawyer. No. I mean, that, you, that you've had some of the official training. Your life has That's been- right. That's right. And we often discount it, right? We often discount our own experiences. Um, you know, there's a, especially for women of color, I think there's some socialization in that, right? And discounting our experiences and what we bring. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to encourage all of us to not, right? To, to really right. lift up all of our experiences and the, the amount, the breadth and depth of what we bring uh, to the work that we, we get to step into. So um, for, and I, I know we only had a, had a few minutes with you, but just wanted yeah. to ask for, for many of us on this call, um, and I keep calling it a call, I don't know what it is, uh, today, <laughs> for many today. of us today, um, this is our, our first opportunity to actually engage or to feel like we're, we're, we're talking to a representative. What mm -hmm. are the best models for communicating our concerns or, or hopes to our representatives? Uh, contact us. So reach out to our offices, whether that's phone call, email. I mean, every week, I, you know, I ask my team, what are, the, what are the, the themes that we're hearing from residents this week? Um, I want to know that. Like, I want to know, you know like what is important to folks. I mean, whether people will write us about different bills that we're considering, people will write us about issues that maybe are specific to them. Uh, people will write us about community issues uh, and, you know, I have my team, thank goodness for them. They're amazing, um, two amazing women um, who I get to work with every day. Um, you know, they kind of are able to help me understand, again, the scope in terms of what's going on out in our community. Because um, I, you know, I can only have so many, I'm only one person. So my, my, one of my team members just said, the other, she's like, we need to make a hologram of you. <laughs> So um, if I could be everywhere, I would to be able to have all those individual conversations with folks. Um, but, but to be able to hear from folks, again, whether it's email or calling offices, um, that is a great way to, to get your voice heard. People come to uh, the Capitol now and lobby in person. Uh, so like last week, we had students who were advocating for um, gun safety uh, measures. Um, and so, you know, to see these young people advocating, you know, in the Capitol or, you know, in our office building, you know, people come directly to us as well. Um, the one thing that I love and we haven't been able to do as much, but are starting to do more is being out in the community. I try to be out there as much as I can, as accessible as I can to have those conversations with folks. Uh, and so if you ever see me, please, please never hesitate to come up and introduce yourself. I will try to do the same, um, but just always trying to keep all the different lines of communication open that we can, and please take advantage of all of them. So you get all these ideas and thoughts and, and, and concerns. How do you balance that? You yeah, are only one person. How do, yeah, how do you... I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'll be honest. Like if you have, if you have some workshops on balance and self-care, I, even though I do. talk all the time about it, I, we do I, stick around. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish I had a great answer for you. I wish I did. Um, it, 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 it is a something that daily I have to remind myself of and, um, you know, remember to get enough sleep, uh, and to, you know, like to move my body and to, um, you know, spend time with folks, you know, like in, in a way where it's not just work. And, you know, like I have to, because my tendency is just to work because there's, there's so much good, you know, there's so much good work to be done and so much need um, that I can get caught in that. And so uh, I think intentionality is really important. Uh, it is very important. You know, so a friend of mine, and, and it's like, we're, we're sitting here talking, we're, we're pals, right? But I, know, but I love I, it. A friend of mine and I have scheduled a 7 a.m. Um, self-care session, right? Oh, so, exactly. so it's only half an hour. We get on and we're Zooming yeah. this self-care yeah. session, right? Yeah. Because I'm in front of my computer while I'm doing the self-care session, I have to really 
really intentionally push myself not to pay attention to my work email. That's it right. It's so ingrained. That's right. In yeah. you that even yeah. when you're trying to do self care, yes. it's yeah. difficult. So that yeah. you're so right. I was just talking with a dear friend uh, the other day, and and we were talking about how um, you know before our our phones, the devices, right, used to be. Well, I mean, this is obviously my opinion. Like, used to be helpful for us, right? Um, and and a tool that we use. And now it seems like it's the reverse, right? You know that right. now it's using us. <laughs> us, right? Um, and and so that's to your point. Like, that's where that intentionality really comes into place. You know that we have to make that space. Um, yeah, I can remember. So you know, like with our kids, we have teenagers, uh, adolescents, fifteen and twelve, and um, they have phones we we were those parents who held off for a long time um and were the mean parents who you know didn't get their kids the phones <laughs> but um <laughs> uh we we did that and it was we spent some time we spent a week away from here uh where there was not phone coverage and it was wonderful right it was wonderful to be able to you know none of us could had access to that uh, and we just spent this time together and like what amazing memories uh, that we created and time that we spent that otherwise might've been taken away because, oh, I'm getting pinged about work or, oh, I'm getting this call or the kids are Snapchatting or Insta, you know, on Insta or whatever, you know? Right. Um, and, and, you know, so that intentionality is, I think the key. Yes. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time with oh, us and you. for your very honest and transparent words and thoughts. Um, I hope um, you've encouraged folks to step out of their comfort zone and perhaps run yeah, for office. Absolutely. Please consider it. And oh, feel free to contact me if folks want to talk about this. I'm always happy to have conversations with folks. Always. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. And I hope you'll stick around for some of the sessions today. Thank you so much for, again, letting me share space with you. Enjoy your day. Celebrate this moment. Uh, congratulations on such an amazing accomplishment. And thank you for everything that you all are doing for our community. Thank you. Well, folks, we're going to um, wrap this session up um, and give you a little break before the next session. I just wanted to say some, some, uh, some closing comments. Um, as Dr. Mara mentioned previously, um, task force members have been working throughout the year to produce this conference. I started off with thanks. I'm gonna end with thanks. Thank you to the task force members and CEW plus uh, staff who are, as we speak, working behind the scenes to make sure that we all have the best experience possible today. You'll hear this many times today, but thank you to TIAA, our corporate platinum plus sponsor, and to our University of Michigan partners and sponsors, CEW plus, University Human Resources, and Michigan Medicine Human Resources for their continued commitment to the Women of Color Task Force. Thank you to Janice Rubin and to the executive team for tackling year-long programming with collegiality, integrity, and good humor. You know, time is strange. I don't really understand all the scientific stuff around time. I only know it seems to move too slowly, like during a particularly trying day, you mean it's only Monday, or too quickly when you're having a great time doing something. I sometimes have to remind myself not to wish away time, to enjoy the moment that I'm in. Lately, I've become keenly aware of wasting time while mindlessly scrolling or looking at CSI reruns. Anyway, let's think back to some women who weren't into wasting time. In 1979, um, Jenny Part Partee of the Affirmative Action Office, Eula Sanders, the School of Education created the Minority Women's Task Force, a staff organization that would provide career development opportunities for minority women employed at the university. With additional support from the University of Michigan Affirmative Action Office, the Human Resource Development Office, School of Education, and the University of Michigan Hospital Office of, of Organizational Effectiveness, which was called the Medical Center at that point, Ms. Partia and Ms. Sanders developed a series of workshops designed to build professional skills that would empower and support African-American women in their career advancement efforts at the university. You can read more about the early years on our website. But these efforts culminated in a day-long career development conference on February 25th, 1980, 
free, that featured 11 professional development workshops and more than 200 conference participants. 40 years seems to have gone by so quickly, but a lot has happened in 40 years. Some of you weren't even born 40 years ago, while one or more of you may have actually attended the first conference. Think back, 1983, E.T., the extraterrestrial, was the movie to watch. Michael Jackson wins Best Album of the Year for Thriller, Record of the Year for Beat It, and the, and the Male Vocalist of the Year. Motorola introduced the first cell phone. Cabbage Patch Dolls were the craze. And on TV, we were watching Dallas, 60 Minutes, Dynasty, and The A-Team. We also saw the final episode of MASH. And in 1983, 200 people attended the first conference, first a task force conference, whose focus was on survival, career development, and networking. Since then, we've had many gains in technology, computers, cell phones, GPS and travel, email, the way we listen to music from records to eight track tapes to cassettes to CDs, and now we're streaming, the way we watch TV and movies. We've seen changes in the way we work, especially in the past two years. Increased use of email, VoIP, and not hardwired phones, electronic forms, data collection, Zoom, and other video conferencing, and even telecommuting. The way we deliver conferences has changed. Two years ago, task force members would have spent days stuffing bags and making name tags. So many changes in 40 years. Our name has changed to the Women of Color Task Force. University sponsors have also changed their names and we now have corporate sponsors. We have more than 1,300 registrants for this conference. Despite all of that, our mission remains the same, to facilitate the professional personal growth of all University of Michigan employees with a focus on the unique challenges of women of color staff. Despite many changes, progress has remained slow in some areas. Many of us haven't been able to move past survival mode. Have you ever tried Googling what time is it? You'll come up with results for time.gov and world clock. They can tell you the time just about anywhere. But the answer to that question really varies by person and where you are in your life. As we contemplated the theme for this conference and the workshops we hope to make available to you, we wanted you to decide what time it was for you. Is the time right for you to make a move, learn a new skill, get your finances together, give to others, focus on yourself, run for office, or even think about retirement? So many options. Whatever time it is for you, I'm confident that today's speakers will give you the tools you need to move forward in your journey. I encourage you to take notes, make connections, and utilize today's resources to make the best use of your time. So I hope you're ready for today. Take a deep breath, perhaps grab some more tea, and follow the link sent to you for your morning session, which will begin at 10 o'clock. See you there.